we go. Let's Yay, thank you. Work? Is that working? Thank now? you very much. Is yes. that working? Okay. Okay. Thank All you right, so, so much. Now I'll share the screen. Here we go. Great. So, yes. Before we start the feast, I want to bring the intention that our gathering today is meant to consecrate the ethernet. We're gonna cut open the net and we're gonna consecrate the ethers with love and light and the power of the living word. So uh, please just don't forget to mute yourself and we're gonna just skip over the appetizers and get right to the main course here. So often, and I'm sure we all have experienced this, in, in order to advance to a higher level in our striving toward destiny, we, we often have to face a test. And tests can sometimes, you know, be painful, like, like a labor before, before birth. So, um, oh, let's see if I can get this to change now. Here we go. So we're said to be facing an illness which under a microscope appears like the sun's corona. So this has really gotten our collective attention, this, this imagination. And the great initiate, Dr. Rudolf Steiner, tells us, quote, illness seeks to create our body anew from out of sun forces arising in the present. So this, this image again of the sun, could it be that the name Corona is a clue to its cure. In the Symphony of the Creative Word, Rudolf Steiner describes the butterfly as having a Corona. Right? Isn't that just a beautiful image? This, this a Corona from a butterfly that that's continuously radiating spiritualized earth matter out into the cosmos. So that's that's quite a, quite an image. He says. It is the butterfly corona which first calls us into earthly existence. So when I think of a, of a corona, I picture a, an aura or a halo or, or, or a crown. And it invokes for me the spiritual concept given by anthroposophy of the etheric body. This is our, our light body where our formative forces originate. Right, that we need these, these formative forces so that our physical body can have life. But this, this formative forces, this light body, this is where our habit life breathes. So we're constantly, we're, when we're working with anthroposophy, you know, we're, we're constantly being called to know thyself. So could the coronavirus be a wake up call to humanity to, to pay attention, first of all, to our own personal habits? right, those rhythms that we have, or maybe we, we lack rhythm. So I find it helpful to align myself with the cycles of the seasons, and, and this is how I find my rhythm. So let's look at where we are now on the wheel of the year. We're still in Eastertide, this amazing threefold movable feast. We're nearing the end of the 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension. Ascension comes on this Thursday. And it's a very, very powerful time where uh, Steiner talks about in the fifth gospel how the 12 receive the esoteric teachings of the risen Christ. And then with the ascension, there's this um, amazing imagination of the Christ ex expanding into the clouds, enacting a shift in the aura of the, the whole planet. And then we enter this mysterious 10 days between Ascension and Pentecost, a time when the original disciples truly felt at loose ends. They were, you know, sitting in, in not knowing what the future would hold, a very, very uncomfortable place. And yet they stuck together, waiting like, like an empty vessel there in the, in the upper room. And so I, I ask you, my friends, during this time of our uncomfortable waiting, could this global pandemic be a catalyst in treating us to practice spirit beholding, to awaken to this 
this light body to this etheric realm that we all share in common with the earth, right? We can think of the atmosphere of the earth. You know, what are we doing to the atmosphere of the, the earth? What can we do to bring light to it? And we can practice spirit recalling to remember that we received our etheric body on old sun. And in practicing spirit sensing, yeah. we can feel that perhaps the coronavirus is an admonition for us to reconnect to the sun forces now imbued with this etheric Christ, this, this shining in the aura of the earth, waiting to be recognized and employed in these current evolving conditions. An invitation for all of humanity to, to rise to a higher stage of initiation, a global coronation, an initiation into sovereignty. The origin of the word sovereign is to serve. To be sovereign is to serve the higher I. This is our birthright, giving us the possibility of seeing that the fulfillment of the secret promise of the ascension is what we call the second coming. So it's, it's not a second coming in a physical body, but a body of light. Will we choose to strive to perceive this and to participate in this revelation? So when we, we nurture social solidarity, we become the chalice, ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Participants in a modern Pentecost, vessels for the fiery light of moral wisdom. Keep open to let this pour into us, revealing our individual missions and our collective destiny. So, I've been really holding this, this picture of, of the appearance of, of like a newborn head of humanity, you know, crowning, <laughs> crowning at the gate of a new birth, you know, a delivery from evil, a labor of love that transforms the crown of thorns into a crown of light so that we can take up the torch of our divine birthright as children of God. I'm also always, always, always living into this ever-present imagination of the earth becoming a sun. This is the fulfillment of our evolution when humanity becomes the 10th hierarchy of love and freedom. But it seems that we were given a test that now we're, we're faced with, with a counter image. So on the macro level, it comes in the form of this little, little tiny little coronavirus. And then on the macro level, modern science is, is shrouding the etheric body of Mother Earth in a, in a web of satellites. So yes, friends, we, we need Michaelic courage and Sophianic wisdom to stay awake to the implications of current events, to make these antagonistic forces work for our highest good. That's why they're there, you know, but we have to recognize them. We have to name them, we have to expose them, we have to see them for what they are through their works in the world before we can bring these forces into the light. Yes, friends, and, and, and Steiner, he also reminds us, like Mr. Rogers, to look for the helpers. He tells us how powers work together with us in the world, how everything that appears to oppose the progress of humankind subsequently turns out to be a blessing for everything in the great world plan is good and evil endures only for a season. And this 
for a reason. Right? Can we take that in a little bit? So, so this leads me to visualize, you know, the representative of humanity, which we all must strive to become. This middle pillar, this pillar of light, this is the antidote. We are the antidote. We're called in to, to hold this balance and foster the light divine, the light of wisdom waiting to be unveiled, and the warmth of love calling to be shared. This is the remedy. Friends, it's, it's also important to remember that, that illness and death are part of the cycle of life connected with our karma. And that's why Dr. Cowan, I don't know if you've watched some of his videos, but he's been suggesting that we read fairy tales like Rye or Rose before we go to bed. And this reminds us that, you know what, if we're meant to prick our finger, you know, hiding away all the spindles or dare I say, sheltering in place is not going to erase the destiny which we signed up for. So what would it be like to awaken to our destiny, to, to align ourselves with this cosmic opportunity, to make a conscious decision to be light workers, to build up our etheric body, our life body, visualizing the earth surrounded by a body of light that we are helping to build. And how do we do this? Well, spiritual science gives us a lot of tools to work with that we don't have time to talk about now. But uh, if you're working with, with anthroposophy, then, then you're, you're on the path. So yeah, all of these tools are, are keys to unlock our destiny. Like in many places, uh, but also in the, the course for young doctors, Steiner tells us how in the first three years, every human being receives a grace that gives us the ability to stand and walk upright, to speak and to think. And that these forces, which are so strong in childhood, they become latent as we age, right? But they're waiting for us to use our higher eye to consciously call them forth again for healing. So, to get rid of that. And whoop. Okay, so now before I ask Raven to bring us some here with me to help us digest this lunch, and, and then Gordon will. Jordan will bring the dessert. Uh, I, I really want to share a revelation that I've been working with. And I, I hope that it will create a, a potentizing after image in you so that it might inspire you to, to take this concept in, into your own practice. So when we, when we do our inner work, we become like a lighthouse, right? Beacons of light for others. But we also light up because then spiritual beings can can see us. And when we rise in our thinking to meet them with our intention of combining our love and light with their divine love and light, together we will be able to co-create a beacon so powerful that it not only protects us from disease, from disharmony, it neutralizes it by bringing it in into that, that human and divine love and light, which are, we are meant to cultivate. We are freeing that energy that's trapped there. We're redeeming it. We're potentizing it so that essentially it then feeds our love and light, makes it stronger. You know, I think of it like, like working in the compost pile, right? How that, that compost, it feeds the earth. And from that earth comes forth new life. And we, we are the midwives, rolling away the, the stone with the angels, you know, opening a way for a new dawning, a, a resurrection that requires fresh formative forces, which first must grow and flourish in our blood, awakening our higher eye in our rhythmic system, right? In our hearts, willing to have cosmic thoughts, hearts willing to to stretch and shift and evolve a fifth chamber, a womb for love and wisdom 
offered up in freedom. So can we cultivate this thought and put into practice at this time now, the fact that we are moving from breathing air to breathing light. This is key. We are to weave a garment of light, the wedding garment, a crown of light. And so to end, I want to share this verse that I've been working with and, and this image of in purest outpoured light, right? So we, we picture this shimmering light from the Godhead, right? Which includes all the hierarchies of angels, all those helpers. It's scintillating, it's moving, it's alive. It totally permeates us so that we're so full of this light that it, it radiates throughout the whole earth. And then that light germinates that seed of love that lives inside of us. And then that blooms forth and it can be poured out to all that lives right? We, we activate that godhood within our soul. And then that spreads out, not just to, you know, our bones and our crown, but to the whole earth, out to the moon, the wandering stars, the zodiac, it goes back out to the godhead. And that's where we rest. We find ourselves again. And then, of course, when we do the verse again, we can feel that future self, that, that past self, imperfection, coming back to to give us this, this impetus, this, these threads of gold that we can weave into a body of light. So I'm gonna to continue to do this work. And, and of course, when two or more are gathered, it's much more powerful. So what would it be like to, to nurture a social solidarity with the intention of building this body of light and love around each other, around the earth, in cooperation with these great spiritual beings? to make the earth a sun. And so now, um, if we could spotlight Raven, she's gonna bring us some, some you're with me. Not Thank sure. you, Hazel. That was amazing. Um, so I need to say that, this is a practical thing, that Zoom is telling me that we only have four minutes left even though I reserved the room until one, I think maybe because we started early, it started the timer. And I don't, you know, I think we only have four minutes. So now we have this decision to make with the next four minutes. So I suggest that we stop the recording. Raven asked that we stop the recording when we do your me, and we let Raven lead us until the time expires. And I apologize to Jordan for not having the five minutes at the end for you to share. But um, we do have the recording and we can, we can send later whatever it is that Jordan creates. But I want to stop talking because now the timer is still ticking away. <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining us in our first Atlanta Anthroposophy Lunch and Learn. Clearly we have a lot to learn or I have a lot to learn. And um, Hazel, thank you. And if that's okay, Raven, we'll just let you lead us. And as the, as the video quits, We'll, we can um, take this into our day. So Hazel, can you stop the recording for, for Raven? Okay.